This is Jeremiah with Fat Man on a Fat Bike, episode three, the Riddle Box Race Report. So, a week and a half ago, I did the Riddle Box 50K. Can't say enough about the race. Fantastic race. It uh, has three, three races. That's 50K foot, 50K bike, and 120K bike. And the, the bikes are split between fat tire and skinny tire bikes. The weather was good. Um, I think high was like 38, 39. And I'm obviously not recording off my phone. I'm at work and using a uh, Apple Cinema display. So this is kind of new for me. So race report, let's get right into it. So uh, race was extremely hard for me. Uh, two weeks prior-ish, we had some fresh snow in Fargo. I biked to work, and my average speed plummeted to like seven miles an hour, which for me on my commute is really slow. And I kind of had a panic attack and decided I was going to back out. My wife, who uh, runs races like the Riddle Box 135 and the Superior 100 um, and the Lean Horse, uh, she basically told me to uh, harden the frack up. And so I decided I'd just kind of. Uh, uh, Take it, take it, uh, take it kind of each day at a time and keep an eye on the weather. My concern was I really wanted to be able to do the race in three and a half, four and a half hours. And I was confident I could do that. The trouble would be is if it got longer than that, I, I didn't feel, oh, that's a little wobbly. I didn't feel like I, I was in a good space to do that. And turns out I was right. Anyways, uh, I'm going to adjust this window really quick. That's weird. So, did the Riddle Box 50K. Good drive down there. It's uh, 35 miles southeast of Sioux Falls uh, near uh, Canton, South Dakota, or Iowa. Canton, yeah, Canton, Iowa, and Inwood, Iowa. At the uh, Calico Skies winery is the home base of the race fantastic venue i haven't tried their wine yet um probably will this weekend anyways uh, they had two roughly about two feet of snow in the last couple of the weeks leading up to the race and then it got super super warm and it all melted and the soil composition out there which is going to be important is mostly clay and sand and so the roads were clear and they weren't muddy per se, like I had mud on my bike, but it was not mud mud. I wasn't covered in mud. It was, it, I, I, would, I wouldn't call it fun mud. It was just kind of just a little damp or mucky. Anyways, the race comes out of the parking lot of the winery, goes up over a hill and down into a river bottle. And I put myself at the back of the race, uh, back of the pack, Specifically, to try to keep myself from getting overly amped, um, and as a as a large obese man, my I have to really focus on keeping my heart rate under control. Otherwise, just I burn up all my fast energy stores really quickly, and then I pay for it heavily. So, and by the way, how I'm going to structure this is I'm going to talk about the race, then I'm going to talk about fuel, then I'm going to talk about the bike, and then I'll talk about what I was wearing, and then we'll be done. Okay, so race. Uh, I still managed to get pretty amped up for about the first five miles and some pretty breakneck descents. Hiked a couple, I, I, I biked over several uphills, um, hiked a couple of the steeper ones, and overall felt really good. The, I'm trying to make sure I'm positioning it right. Yeah, so we came into the river bottom and there was an aid station with Jim Beam and PBR and bacon. I had some bacon, I skipped the alcohol. Uh, took a leak, topped off my water bottles. Uh, water intake did concern me a little bit at that point because I was drinking more than I expected. Uh, normally, at least my test rides, I was at uh, about 20 ounces of water and a uh, 100 calories per 10 miles and I was like, I was pretty close actually on the water. Uh, my calories, I 
was having, I, I was sticking, uh, oh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Anyways, left, came up over the river, uh, came down, there's this fantastic, it's called a glacial mound, it has to do with how the plains were formed here. Anyways, it's a steep hill just in the middle of nowhere, like flat everywhere, big hill. And there's this really weird, like, higher end, I don't know if it's high end, but like nice uh, housing development, just boom. And there's like, there's nothing around there. So it's just really kind of weird. Anyways, um, you come over and the road's closed on the opposite side because of the rain runoff created these really deep, like three, four foot deep runoffs crisscrossing the road. And so I don't, a dedicated off-road vehicle like a, a kitted up uh, Jeep 4Runner probably could do it. Um, but you'd have to rock crawl it. You wouldn't be able to just drive up it. Uh, a normal truck, there's no way. Anyways, uh, at that point, I'm riding with, I think his name was Kyle, uh, Dreadlocks. Matt, another big guy. Uh, or Kyle was on a Pugsley. Matt was on a framed frame. I don't know what the model was. Uh, bigger guy and then Adam uh, from Two Wheeler Dealer I think he works there part time anyways he uh, he was the Grim Reaper of the race uh, so he was the last guy and he, he was going to pull people if they, they weren't going to be able to finish and and then we got joined by the guy running the first aid station uh, crap I want to say his, first, his name's Jonathan oh, I feel bad for forgetting anyways Oliver is that his, he, everybody calls him RJ, even though his initials are JR, because quality bike parts can't get it right. And so everybody just started calling him the same thing quality bike parts calls him, which is hilarious to me. Anyways, he's like 22, 23 years old. He reminded me of a, a Labrador puppy that was just tons of energy biking all over the place, ditches, fields. And uh, it was actually, Kind of nice to have him around because the uh i mean i wasn't suffering yet anyways go over the glacial mound and it's super technical i'm told hang to the right um as much as you can and that's the way down so i decided in my infinite wisdom to ride all the way right up on top of those so when they cut the hill there's berms on either side and there's a barbed wire fence and so i go all the way right I get up on top of the berm and the ice cream truck is just crushing it like thick grass and reeds and it's just plowing right over it and I'm you know I'm being technical and careful and because now the the embankment's getting deeper and deeper and deeper and, and so at about the six foot deep you know embankment to road and there's barbed wire fence on the other side of the embankment I just barely saw the giant rock in my way and so I grabbed both brakes jumped off my seat and slam my jibblies right on the top two. I carefully kept my balance. I was worried about flatting if I fell into the, the barbed wire fence and I was afraid of breaking something if I fell onto the road. And so I carefully did this weird maneuver to like get off the bike and maintain my balance and I kind of scrambled down onto the road and got back on the bike and then just crushed the rest of the way down. Um, I have no, no complaints about the, the handling on the ice cream truck. None. It's, I was able to maintain good speed. Uh, I downhill pretty quickly, pretty briskly. Um, like Strava said, my, my, I had several 38.8 mile an hour descents. Um, how accurate that is, I don't know. But uh, I descended pretty hard to try to make up for time because I was having to hike a few uphills. So you go over the glacier mound and then it's this long, maybe two degree downhill for a good ways before it starts jackknifing back up. And I realized the day was gonna be really hard because you could hear the clay sticking to the wheels as, as, as I was rolling. And I realized if I stopped pedaling on a shallow downhill that the bike would stop and I'd fall. And that, ugh, that's tough. And on the other side of that glacial downhill, sure enough, like that, that wind, that 10, 15 miles an hour, which is no big deal in the plains, kicks in. And that's not a 10, 15. That was 20, 25, steady. Like it was not a gusty wind, it was just steady. 
and I am not aerodynamic. So, uh, I wasn't suffering yet. Uh, I was just pedaling, and I was really focused on making it halfway. Uh, big turn east, so it's a big box. Um, west, north, east, south, west. And so I was focused on getting to that turn. And so we started pedaling, and Kyle and Matt just are going faster than me by a, a reasonable amount, and they go out. Um, I focused really hard on just spinning, keeping, keeping my knees moving. Uh, I was starting to have a little bit of back pain because I was stooping into the wind, and so I was just, I was really focusing. And then through that, I noticed my water intake started just increasing. And that's, that was a little tough. So come through, get to the halfway, uh, actually it wasn't quite halfway. I got to about a third of the way done and um, Took in some more calorie, extra calories on top of what I was already doing. Um, hit halfway and got a turn out of the wind. Even the, the crosswind, because it, it was kind of a quartering crosswind. It wasn't a true crosswind. Anyways, it wasn't exactly the bountiful break I was hoping for. The And then the turn south. The thing is, is the first half has some, the, with the river bottom and the glacial mount, has some big hills. But once you get out of the, the river plain, um, very, very hilly, just nonstop. There is no flat. It's it's just you're either going down or up. I think I heard the quote of the, the weekend was, you know what the best part about a downhill is? There's an uphill after it, and that's sucky. Anyway, my computer just locked. Um, hang on. And... Uh, so, geez, am I recording that long? Yeah, it is. Awesome. So, top five miles, it's not fun anymore. And there was a quote, um, not that my wife hasn't told me this, but one of my wife's running partners, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Mike Nichols, uh, messaged me on Facebook and said, learning to suffer well is a big part of these races and so go with a mindset that you're going to have to learn how to suffer well and and so i really i really dug into it um i tried to stay very zen in this race and the fact that i, I had no timing device um, i was wearing my apple watch but it it died i maybe four hours in so all I, could, all I focused on was was keeping my feet moving, just pedaling and hiking, pedaling and hiking, pedaling and hiking. Anyways, I uh, turned the corner, started heading south. I almost missed a corner because I was just, I was so focused. Like anytime I stopped for water or anything else, I didn't stop very often. I didn't stop for long, maybe a minute, two minutes tops. Uh, one didn't want to get cold. Coming out of the river bottom, I, I was super heated up. Pulled my mittens down, unzipped my my vest, and then got into the wind. Got super chilled, so it was this. It was actually perfect, but it was just I, I was I was geared to the point where stopping for long wasn't good, which I would totally repeat. Anyways, second half and some big hills. I mean, just like just frequent big hills, and I'm starting to get pretty brittle and somewhere in there RJ finds a possum in the ditch and I think he ran it over with his fat bike anyways we stop and it's on Instagram uh, you can find me uh, Puchimbo P-U-C-H-E-M-B-O on Instagram and I don't, I don't repost it anyways we posed for pictures with this dead possum that turns out had been shot. The chair just ran over it after it was dead. And 
which will lead to a funny story at the end. Anyway, not that that isn't funny enough. So made the final turn and the when I crew and I help out at and volunteer at Ultra Races, I'm really careful to give perfect, exact descriptions of what's going on. Because especially in the second half uh, of a race, misinformation can be mentally really tough. And so the guy there, I, you know, I'm, I'm, he, he meant really well, but he was like, it's super short. You got two big hills and then a turn and you're, you're good to go. And made the turn. And I know, like in the back of my mind, I know I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it close on the cutoff. I had no idea how long I was out there, but I could see my headlight on the ground. And that means, you know, race started at 10, sun goes, starts going down at 4.30, 4. And so, like, that's not good. And, man, those hills were huge. Crushed them on the downhills, spun up as far as I could get on the uphills. RJ was being awesome and encouraging, and eventually I had to ask him to shut up. And we made the final turn, and like I'm so focused on just turning my feet in the six, you know, two yards to 50 yards in front of me. And Adam points out the just on the you know just over the top of the hill is, is the roof of the winery, and um, and I'm gonna totally tear up here. So come down the corner, and you can see the winery and the vast majority of the racers who had hung out for the raffle and the, uh, the award ceremony, like the majority of them um, were there, came out and cheered me in. And I was, uh, I was last place uh, with eight minutes to spare. And that was, man, I think it's been a week and a half and I still am tearing up about it. So uh, that's the Robox 50K, fantastically well-run race. Fantastic course. I'm totally going to do it again. Uh, I would definitely change my training. Um, you know, training more. Uh, I can only get better from here. And uh, and so, uh, we had 419 pounds the day before the race. And so that race, I was out there for 6 hours and 52 minutes. I would say at the 25 mile mark is when I went over the edge. Um, and I, I pushed myself physically pretty far out there. And um, I had a limp, um, like, <laughs> like recovery pains, like my tries and like my wrists, are, my wrists are still a little jacked up and I, it's not from the bicycle uh, bars so much as it is from just pushing the bike. And, and so I'm, we're ballparking it at 5,000, 6,000 calories of burn. So my, my fueling plan going into it was to put a, a cliff block in my cheek and just suck on a cliff block. So that way I had a trickle of calories coming in so my GI wouldn't shut down. I'd eat bacon at the stops, uh, the Hadamers too. And I had some epic bars and I would eat two epic bars, one at one third, one at two thirds. So when I get pushed far, far enough into that endurance and I've burned enough calories, my body just does not want to eat at all. And I'm a fat man. I'm not used to having to force myself to eat. I'm used to forcing myself to not eat. Anyways, uh, so I, I really struggled there and took in about a total of 900 calories for the whole race. First of all, there's no way to keep, you know, you can't keep up with the burn. It's just, you're never going to do it. And uh, so next time, or my next race, I'm going to focus on making sure I have calories in my bottles, simply for the fact that I need the extra calories. The cliff blocks in the cheek, it's a good trick. I like it. Um, and the epic bars, I, you know, I probably probably eat a half an epic bar right before the start of the race not like right right but like a half hour before the start of the race just to kind of get something in my stomach kind of settle it down and 
then I would probably nibble on that a couple times. So that's the fueling. Bicycle, uh, so Surly, uh, Surly ice cream truck, XRX large frame. Uh, didn't change up the tires, still running the stock tires, still running the st uh, stock group set. I had, in the weeks uh, leading up to the race, I had to replace my seat post because it got twisted uh, with a Thompson Elite. Can't, uh, no complaints, fantastic. Actually, I love it, it's, it's really is fantastic. And I snapped one of the rails on my Brooks Cambrium C17. I'm not sure that it's Brooks's fault. I think I might have over tightened the bracket. I have no way of knowing. Um, they warranted the parts, so you know we'll see. But in my panic in the lead up, I bought a WTB Rocket Pro. It's the DNA pattern with the chromoly rails. And it doesn't have the cutout, but it has the, the glove channel for uh, your perineum. And I got some good rides in with it before the race and uh, I love the seat. I, I, I think on gravel and gravel grinding, I think I'll like the Cambrium better. It, it's kind of weird, but I think it soaks up the, a little bit of the chatter a little better, but for winter riding, that rocket is good. Uh, Jones Carbon uh, Loop H-Bar, uh, good, no complaints. Oh, actually fantastic, I love it. And some Portland design uh, fenders, which kind of keeps the muck off stuff. Mostly I want to keep it off my water bottles. So that's the bike. On my body, uh, I wore hiking boots. So good, uh, they're Basque hiking boots. Wasatch, I think is the model name. I can't remember, I bought them a couple of years ago. Uh, darn tough, tall wool socks a pair of Under Armour cold gear over a pair of Trek biking shorts, a Duluth Trading Company long sleeve waffle knit tech shirt, a Under Armour tech t-shirt, and a Duluth Trading Company windproof fleece vest. Uh, and then I Started the race with a poly buff underneath my helmet, and halfway I switched it for the wool buff. And no goggles, no glasses. Definitely wear glasses next time. Uh, I got some mud in my eyes that kind of freaked me out. Uh, shorter duration race, the Apple Watch would be just fine. Longer duration race. Uh, I also carried a battery pack for my uh, iPhone. The uh, phone was fully charged when I was done. I don't know. It, 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 seriously, like, I'm not a weight weenie because me being a weight weenie is stupid. So that's the uh, bike and the kit. So, long story, uh, possum, possum story. So, <laughs> we, uh, I, I related the story on the way way home to my wife and she thought for sure I was hallucinating which I mean that's a pretty impressive hallucination because I mean there were people involved and thankfully the picture got sh uh, shared on Instagram on the fatbike.com uh, account and, and she was just she was like oh I'm so glad it's, that wasn't a hallucination so I don't know what it says about my marriage where hallucinating during a race is totally considered normal but I'll take it so, Riddlebox 50K. Um, physically, I uh, had some liver swelling afterward, uh, about a day, two days after. Um, I was really uncomfortable and had to go to the doctor and get it checked. Turns out if you're, a, if you're a morbidly obese person or obese person and you engage in um, extended endurance workouts, um, you can your ALT can get massively jacked up. Not like hepatitis levels, but there's definitely some the, like the physical hardships on your body. Joints, uh, joints and muscles, man, I can't complain. Uh, I've done way better than than I expected, and and so so I'm really really happy. The here's the big takeaway. 
as soon as we loaded the truck to head down, mentally, mentally I prepared myself to be pulled from the race. I wasn't going to quit. The only way I would have quit was if the bike broke or I needed to go to a doctor. And that really makes, that really makes a big difference. The other thing is, is that, and, and, and just the ultra community, endurance athletics is by far the best community, the most inclusive community. As long as you put in the work and you show up and you work really hard, it is a very good place to be. And I can't, I can't say that about all communities I've been around. I stopped doing triathlons because it was not, I didn't find it to be a good community to, to be with. I didn't, I didn't feel, I didn't feel, I knew I was never going to win or, or place even for my, even as a Clydesdale. I mean, it's hilarious. Like in cycling and triathlons, a Clydesdale starts at 220 pounds. And I think I, I weighed more than 220 pounds junior high. So I'll never be that way. So, yeah, Riddle Box 50K, glad I did it. It was extremely hard. And it was extremely worth it. Uh, it was good for my marriage, <laughs> so I'll take it. And yeah, so uh, I did make the mistake last week. Uh, so it's been a week and a half. Last week I biked close to 30 miles. Probably should have spent a little less time on the bike, but I'm I feel better emotionally when I ride, and so I bike. I took two days off uh, Monday and Tuesday, and uh, so I'm on the bike again today. I'll be on the bike again tomorrow. Friday I probably won't get to ride, and then we'll ride again Saturday. So I'm I'm pretty happy. So, man, if you made it this far, let's see how long this has been. Twenty-seven minutes. Thank you for thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. If you want to hook up with me on Instagram uh, or Strava, I'm Puchimbo on both P U C H E M B O. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Maya M I A H from Fargo. Uh, I'll put the links in the show description if anybody cares. Thanks.